Welcome back. I thought I'd do a quick catch up video with the Arduino and the DRO interface that I was demonstrating um, a few months back. So for those of you who have already seen that video, here's the, the Arduino that I used previously. So there's a counter and it interfaces via the cable to the DRO sensor, which is here. However, this time around, what I thought I'd do and it's based on a number of questions that people have asked, is I would show what the actual analog signals look like that come from the sensor. So if you remember, there's a, a, a device in here which takes four analog signals and generates two digital outputs. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to hook it up to this logic analyzer here. And this particular uh, model allows me to sample analog signals and digital signals at the same time. So what I've got is on yellow and green, the yellow and green ch channels here, I've got the digital output from the, the digital side of the processor. And going in on the other side, I've got the, well, th this one here is ground, but these four here are the analog inputs that go into the analog side of that chip. So what I wanted to do is just move the sensor back and forward for a few seconds, just so you can see the difference between what the analog side looks like and what the digital output looks like as well. So I won't show the screen here. What I will do is I will show what's on the output of the logic analyzer. On the, uh, on the input on the logic analyzer here, I've selected the digital inputs as channels four and five, which is the green and the yellow, and analog inputs on uh, channels zero through to three, which is the, the analog side. So if we start recording, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see that the logic side there is, is high, um, and but the analog is sort of varying all over the place. Now, as I slide the head back and forward, you'll see that it's counting up and counting down. And you've got signals, you've got the analog signals on the, the top four lines here, and then you've got di the digital signals on the bottom. So when the head's not moving, the analog, there's a bit of noise on the analog signals, but they're not changing in value other than the, the general background noise. And the same goes for the digital ones as well. You can see that we currently have uh, channel four here, that's currently high, and channel five is currently low. And as I move it, you can see they alternate again. So now channel four is now low and channel five is now high. Um, and the values here have changed as well. So if we stop recording here and just zoom in, what we can do is, in fact, let's find one, let's find a slightly longer one, here we go. So it's easier as well if we drag the appropriate digital channel to the pair that uh, it maps along to. So what you want to look for is the rising edge. Let's, let's pick channel five here. So we've got the rising edge here. And what we're looking for is the point at which the two analog signals cross over. So one will be on the descent and one will be on the rise. So looking at this, if we compare the point at which this transitions from a low to a high, which is this point right here. And if we look at channels two and three, you can see that one's reached almost the, the peak of the uh, of the wave here and the other one's almost at the bottom so it's not those because the change in state is when the voltages pass each other so if we however compare the top ones here so channel zero and channel one at the point where we transition you can see that channel zero is is descending in value and channel one is rising in value and at about the point where we have a transition here. You can see, I'll try and get as close as possible, that channel zero is at about 1.9 volts 
and where are we and channel one is at about 2.5 so at that point they've changed channel zero was higher and is now lower and channel one was lower and is now higher so at the point where those two values change where channel zero is lower than channel one it goes from low to high and the same can be said for the other one as well so the other channel so let me drag that up there so channel 5 is the output from the input of the analog input channel 0 and channel 1 and channel 4 is the digital output of the analog channels 2 and 3 so you can see here as well so we're going from a low to a high and you can see that it's as channel 3 is descending in value and channel 2 is rising in value so it's again it's the same point as one passes as one value passes the other it changes state it goes from a low to a high and the same happens on the on the the on the reverse as well when it goes from a high to a low so we can see that as channel 2 is now descending in value channel 3 is now rising and at the point where they cross over that's where it then changes state back to zero or back back to the um the lower level what i'm looking to do now is take the analog signal that we can capture here and there's a lot more data in this analog signal you can see it, it varies from there's a pro, there's an approximate peak of 2.3 volts approximately at the maximum and it drops to approximately 800 millivolts should we say thereabouts at the bottom so we've got a swing from 2.3 volts to 800 millivolts and that represents a transition from a logic level of zero to five volts here but what if you were to sample using an analog to digital converter the stages or the steps between the 2.3 volts there and the 0.8 volts there if you were to divide this voltage difference here into say 200 state steps and you did that for all of these inputs you would be able to artificially calculate this crossover point but you would also have a far greater resolution you would be able to infer the position of the the read head to a to a far higher accuracy so if you think about what's happening here as we move the read head along these values are all changing so all of the states are changing you've got the four analog values they change and at certain points it changes in logic state now each one of these changes here you on channel a and channel b represents on these scales uh, five microns what we're looking at in the horizontal scale is time so the bigger the gap the slower the sensor is reading but the actual distance it's traveled is the same between there and there and between there and there it's exactly the same distance it's five microns so if we know that between this point here and this point here it's five microns and we can measure the voltage difference between the peak or between the highest value and the lowest value on each of these analog signals we can subdivide that which means we can have a far greater resolution instead of it being five microns between here and here we can divide it into say 200 steps so we can subdivide these five microns into potentially 200 steps of those five microns that would be asking a lot however even if you were to divide it by say 10 or 20 that means you could potentially generate a sub micron resolution from this dro sensor so one of the projects i'm going to be looking at is capturing the analog signals and instead of reading the digital signal like i did with the arduino i'm going to use a series of analog to digital converters to take those four analog signals and to process them to output a far greater resolution now a slight 
calculation on the back of a piece of paper, um, I should be able to get to 0.1 micron resolution relatively easy without too much overheads and processing. So stay with me. There should be more to come in uh, over the following weeks. But uh, I thought I'd just give everybody uh, an introduction as to what, what is happening with this project. Those of you who stuck around, thank you for watching. I hope that answered some of the questions that were raised. And um, I should hopefully have some more information and some examples, perhaps a working example sometime soon. Thank you very much for watching.